January 30th here on the little farm. Um, got a tool in my hand, something that uh, I consider to be invaluable. It's an uh, infrared uh, thermometer. And I'm going to give you a little overview of why I think this is such an important tool. I'm standing out here in front of the John Deere 3300 old combine, 1976 year model. And this thing is filled with bearings like that one and that one uh, and that one and that one and the ones I'm pointing out are what you called sealed for the life of the bearing in other words there's no way to grease it um, you need to keep an eye on it well I've had one serious bearing failure on this combine in the uh, almost 18 years now that I've had it. It's coming up in a few months I will have had this thing 18 years. But the failure I had was up in here on an idler pulley. Uh, bearing just, it was wore out and it came apart and it threw the ball bearings out and one of them went through the radiator and that was an exciting event. And like the ones I was pointing out on the other side, there's a bearing right here, there's a bearing right there. You can't grease those. So what I've been doing with this, and I've uh, done it enough times that I've got a pretty good idea what the bearing temperatures would be after this machine had been thrashing uh, soybeans for about 15 minutes. That's that's long enough to get them up to what would be considered the normal temperature. But the way this works, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see the red dot or not, it's infrared. I'm going to shoot that bearing right there. And we're back down to having cold weather again. So you can see that's reading 19.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I did for... Um, <clears throat> To establish a, like a, a history and, and know what these temperatures should be, I would shoot them like I said about 15 minutes after running, and then I'd go out and run, and I'd have this tool with me, and I'd run around and shoot all the bearings and see if I had one that was hot, um, and if I had one that was hot, that the temperature ran up above uh, what this had shown me that I had established as a normal temperature. I knew I needed to uh, get a replacement on that one or I was going to have a big problem, costly expensive problem too. Um, let me show you another use for this. Let's walk down here. 4020. Now a practical use for this. The old way of doing this, <clears throat> if, I thought I, if I thought by the temp gauge up here <clears throat> I was having a, a problem with cooling the uh, <clears throat> water, antifreeze, I'd run the tractor and see the temp gauge climb up and say, well, maybe the radiator is partially blocked. Of course, you'd have to turn it off. Uh, you're not going to stick your hand in here with the fan running. But you would stick your hand back in here like this and start moving it around to, on the radiator. And you were looking for warm spot, cold spot. Now, if you had a cold spot, that means that portion of the radiator was blocked and you weren't getting water through it to be cooled or have the heat transferred out of it and you had reduced the effective cooling capacity of the radiator. It was time for the radiator to come out and go to a radiator shop and be uh, acid dipped and rotted out and uh, pressure tested and maybe painted and paid for and put back in the tractor. But with this little device I can get in here and shoot a spot on the radiator of course down here in the sun this is up to 24.3 degrees, but I can start shooting different spots on this radiator and find out quickly if I've got that issue in the radiator. That's practical use for it. Now, everybody, YouTube farming channels that I've been watching, these kids get out and do their cold starts. Yeah, they're up north and it's uh, 19 degrees or 10 degrees below or whatever. Uh, and you go out there and you start your tractor. Well, let's say you really wanted to prove that you were doing a cold start. So you'd, you know, most of them walk up here and lay their hand on the muffler and go, see, it's cold. Well, 
that's nice. But you could take this and shoot right here on the exhaust manifold and see that, okay, that's 30 degrees. And you can shoot down here on the block and see that that's uh, 28.6. And then you would have positive proof evidence that you were doing a cold start. Okay, that's not, you know, a super practical use for the tool, but uh, that's something you could do with it if you had one of these. These things were expensive when they first came out. They're down now to about $30. I don't recommend any particular manufacturer. Uh, this one, I don't know, I saw it and I bought it and it served me well. But find one, get one. The, being able to check your bearings is uh, handy. For instance, the bearings on this right here, they're friction bearings. There's no grease fitting on that. If I start hearing some squeaky mess going on back here, sometimes it's one of these uh, sweeps right here has got something caught up in it. But my first suspect is, is one of these bearings about to go. Is it generating heat due to excessive friction? And if it is, I can come down here and shoot it right there. And of course you see right now that's uh, 26.3 degrees. Uh, over here, this mower has a bunch of bearings in this thing. Now, every one of the bearings that's on a blade, and there's five blades in it, they got grease fittings, and they did this thing right. They put the extension line on it here so I can get to the fitting out here and don't have to take the uh, shields off to grease it. They did that on all five of them. <coughs> But there's two tensioner bearings, two tensioner pulleys with bearings in them. The dagnab things are those sealed for the life of the bearing, which guarantees you'll have a short life. Um, I can check them with this and see if they're starting to heat up. They are. Change them before something flies all to pieces. Uh, one of the places that I have really used this is my riding lawnmower 1987 year model uh, white GT 1810 uh, lots of bearings down there on the deck same thing with this tool and go down here and shoot it right there and that's black and been in the sun I'm reading about 30.8 degrees yeah, we got a cold day here in North Carolina, so bright, sunny, beautiful day, though. But anyhow, I wanted to show off this tool, so uh, that's what this is all about. Come over here. Next project issue on this Ford tractor. I am dreading this with a passion. Uh, the way they put this muffler on here, as you can see, is a U-bolt style clamp and the pressure applied to stop the leakage has got that classic dent right here. But I gotta get this off so I can get this cow one off so I can fix what the person did here when they changed this from a generator to an alternator. I got to noticing, in fact, uh, a viewer noticed this and uh, pointed it out to me. The belt's super loose and when I came out here to try to tighten it, I found that you can't. The alternator's already right up against the sheet metal, and the brace that they put in back here on the back, as you can see, it's bolted here, solid fixed hole bolt, and it's bolted here. There's no slide, no adjustment. Well, even if there was some slide adjustment, I got nowhere to go. I'm right up against the sheet metal here. I've got some ideas on what, I'm, what I can possibly do with it. There's plenty of room to move this back towards the block and go and find a half inch shorter uh, or inch shorter V-belt. I'm kind of hoping that might be the solution that I can get away with and then I'll just adjust the, uh, this by actually cutting me a slot in it so that it's got a slot that I can bolt to. But uh, that right there is causing this tractor not to charge fully. 
and I want to get it straightened out. So that's the next mechanic project to happen out here. Well, everybody, thanks for watching.